Hey, what's up? I'm Mr. Hanish, and welcome to My Flipped Classroom. Today we start our series on South America, the continent that is south of North America, where we are. Duh, right? This particular video will focus on Caribbean South America. I mean, Caribbean South America includes the countries of Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, and Suriname, as well as the territory of French Guiana, which is governed by France, hence the name. The physical geography of this region is fairly diverse and very beautiful, and has even been indirectly featured in a Disney Pixar feature film, but I'll get to that in a sec. Let's start in the west, which puts us in the country of Colombia. The western half of Colombia prominently features the northern reaches of the Andes mountain range, and has peaks as high as 18,000 feet above sea level. Some of the peaks in this part of the range are actually active volcanoes, and Colombia experiences some eruptions and resulting earthquakes because of it. The Andes Mountains have a ridiculous amount of influence on climate, vegetation, and how people live, but we'll get into that much, much more when we talk about Pacific South America. For now, just know that the Andes play a big role in the life of many Colombians. As we travel further east, we would be dropping significantly in elevation to a grassy plains area known as the Llanos. The Llanos has very little vegetation in it, which means very few roots in the soil, which means it is susceptible to the effects of erosion, or the movement of sediment from one location to another, when flooding occurs. This turns farming into a higher risk industry because the crops are continually facing the possibility of being completely washed away. If we moved further east still into southern Venezuela, Guyana, and Suriname, we would rise in elevation once more, into the Guiana Highlands. Here we see the results of erosion once again, because most of the Guiana Highlands are plateaus with incredibly steep cliffs, but with flat sandstone layers at the very top. Over time, wind and rain have beaten down the sides, but the sandstone has resisted the erosion, so the sides have tapered down and become the steep cliffs we see today, without the sandstone tops really changing. In the midst of the Guiana Highlands in southern Venezuela lies the world's largest waterfall, a 3,200-foot behemoth called Angel Falls. So now I want you to picture Angel Falls dumping water 3,200 feet from an incredibly flat sandstone top down the steep sides of a plateau. Now picture a colorful house sitting just to the left of the falls. How did it get there? What if an old man flew it there by rigging thousands of helium balloons to it with the help of a chubby wilderness explorer? Yes, the movie Up, according to my analysis anyway, must be based on this region of the world. I know, I know, the Up aficionados in the audience will point out that in the movie it's called Paradise Falls rather than Angel Falls, and that Carl appears to buy tickets to travel to Peru rather than Venezuela. But, the Disney Pixar bigwig did travel to the Guiana Highlands to get sketches, photos, and videos to begin modeling the landscape for their own animations when they worked on the project, at least according to scienceforgrownups.com. And the Angel Falls Wikipedia page mentions its reference in the popular media category. So, Up's Paradise Falls is based on Angel Falls. I have exhaustively researched this issue on the interweb, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, winding down from the Guiana Highlands through the Llanos and into the Atlantic Ocean is a 1600 mile long river called the Orinoco. It is only a fraction of the size of South America's largest river, but it is notable for having one of the highest concentrations of plant and animal species in the world. The Orinoco can be a dangerous place with crocodiles and piranhas patrolling the water and jaguars and ocelots prowling the banks. As far as climate and vegetation are concerned, there are a few factors that come into play in this region. Most of the region has a very warm climate, but as mentioned before, it can get much colder depending on elevation in the Andes region of Colombia. Tropical savanna climate with a wet and dry season can be found in the Llanos, while on the eastern side of the Guiana Highlands into Suriname and French Guiana, you will find tropical rainforest that is wet and humid all year. Resources from the area include oil, especially in Venezuela, which has actually been a bit of a touchy political subject between the U.S. and Venezuela over the last couple decades, and timber from the rainforests, fish from the Atlantic, Caribbean, and Orinoco River, 
crops such as rice, bananas, sugarcane, and my personal favorite, the largest purpose served by Columbia, production of the lifeblood of educators everywhere, coffee. Much like the history of Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean, the history of Caribbean South America follows a distinct pattern. Up until about 1500 AD, small native tribes were occupying much of Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana, and the Chibcha were rocking in Colombia, producing some of the finest gold products known to man at the time. Seriously, they had so much gold they would essentially baptize their new leaders covered in gold dust, while everyone else chucked a bunch of gold and emerald chunks into the water around them. But in the 1500s, the Spanish arrived looking for gold and other treasures, which obviously they found with the Chibcha in Colombia, but the rest of the region went through a very similar situation as the Arawaks. There wasn't much gold, so they turned to forced labor and agriculture instead. Today, the culture of the region shows a heavy Spanish influence because of the Spanish empire that was there. Spanish is the number one language, and Roman Catholicism is the number one religion, but there are also elements from the natives and Africans that were brought for slave labor that have survived as well, such as food and music. Following the pattern of Central America and the Caribbean again, by the turn of the 19th century, the natives were sick of the Spanish and ready for self-rule, largely through the help of Simon Bolivar, the George Washington of South America. In the wake of a successful revolution in the United States, and with all the issues Spain faced at home and in other colonies, Simon Bolivar wanted to copy the model of the American colonists who broke away from Britain and formed a large federated country, which means many smaller local states operating under one super large national government. If he had gotten his way, today we may have been studying the United States of South America rather than the independent countries it's now broken into. Sadly for Bolivar, there was way too much infighting and bickering over access to resources to join together as one. In fact, a cycle of selfish leadership, violence, and wealth inequality continued for quite some time. And today the area is still in a transition phase. For 14 years, Venezuela was under the leadership of Hugo Chavez, who ran an anti-American socialist-style government. And since his death, Nicolas Maduro has come to power, and Venezuela has experienced riots and violence with the government claiming responsibilities in the hand of the protesters, and the protesters claiming that there wouldn't be any riots if the government would fix the economy and make the streets safer and allow more freedom of speech. Colombia built a reputation throughout the 1980s as being the world's cocaine factory and housing the infamous Pablo Escobar, the world's wealthiest drug lord. And even though he's been dead for over 20 years now, drugs remain a big issue in Colombia. Colombia has also been dealing with a semi-civil war for about 50 years consecutively now, with multiple rebel groups, including left-wing socialist groups, fighting against government forces. In Suriname, they've just begun experimenting with democracy, but they have a history of human rights issues to deal with, and French Guiana has the special situation of being governed by people thousands of miles away in France. To see what happens in this region in the future, we'll likely have to wait and find out how these respective governments handle these weird situations. It's really not easy to predict what's going to happen, so for now, go study, and until next time, bye bye Here we see the results of erosion once again because most of the Guiana Highlands are plateaus with incredibly steep cliffs but with flat sandstone layers at the very top. Over time, probably because it's in your folder which is in here. Tuesday. Pedro, always losing stuff. <laughs>